Scott Hickel's 59th article, Free Will Does Not Absolve God from Evil. God is the God of evil, or evil is the God of God. So many times I've heard this argument, a human must make a free will choice to do evil because if God planned for him to do evil, then that would make God evil. They think that this argument gets God off the hook for evil committed in the world. It does not. First, just to touch briefly on the fact that God is not a man like us, therefore he can cause us to do evil and eventually turn that evil into good. Therefore, while the action remains an evil deed, Committed by us, God uses it for an ultimate good and thus is not evil. Many examples of this is in Scripture. For instance, God planned for specific people to murder Jesus, which eventually led to the greatest good in saving all mankind. So it was evil for these people to murder the Son of God, and yet God planned it in order to save humanity. Acts 4, 27-28. Same thing with Joseph and his brothers in Genesis. Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, which was extremely evil, and yet God did this in order to save Israel, which was extremely good. It was still evil committed by the brothers, but God did it for, the, for good, so he is not evil. God will justify every sin and every evil in this manner. Evil itself is a creation of God. After all, he is the one that put it in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Remember, we cannot have a knowledge of what good is unless we have an experience of evil. It is an experience of evil God has given to the sons of humanity to humble them by it. Ecclesiastes 1.13 I am Yahweh and there is no other, former of light and creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil. I, Yahweh, make all these things. Isaiah 45.7 People refuse to acknowledge the scripture that teaches that God is the creator of evil because they think it must mean that God is evil. He is not. Temporary evil is set up for us to enjoy never-ending joy with God. We can't understand immortality if we didn't have an experience of in, 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 We can't understand immortality if we didn't have an experience in morality. We can't understand resurrection if we didn't have an ex, have an experience of death. We can't understand righteousness if we didn't have an experience of sin. We can't understand justification if we were never condemned. We can't understand what is what it's like for God to be our all if we never had a feeling of separation from him, and on and on. Once evil serves its purpose, it will be abolished forever, taking the responsibility of evil off of God. It actually takes God off his throne. Why? Because now God has to react to a presence of evil that was not his creation and is not part of his plan. This belief makes the Almighty God subject to evil when God is the subjector of all, and hence his subjector. This belief makes the Almighty God subject to evil when God is the subjector of all, and hence his subject to nothing. So those that do not understand evil's place in God's plan have to get God off the hook by saying that man chooses evil and God is not responsible. Therefore, this clears God of any evil. However, human free will does not get God off the hook in any way. If you read my articles or watch my videos, you know that I do not believe in human free will. Scripture totally disproves it, and in this article I am going to present a few scriptures that prove God is responsible even if we had free will. However, these scriptures will just disprove human free will like all scripture does. If evil ever stops God from getting what he wants, then he is not fit to be called God. Something came into his creation that is more powerful than him. Only many will then take the argument that God gave us free will to choose to love him or not. Therefore, evil was ne necessary. However, even if there, this was true, which it's not, if God still has power over our circumstances, then our will is not free. A few examples. God stopped. Abimelech. Abimelech from sinning in order. In Genesis 20, Abraham said that his wife Sarah was his sister, and this is what God said to Abimelech. The one Elohim replied to him in the dream, I too know that you have done this in the sincerity of your heart, and I was also keeping you back from sinning against me. Therefore I did not allow you to touch her. Genesis 26. 
So according to those that believe in free will, humans can commit sin independent of God. Yet God can stop someone from sinning at any time, as in the case of Epilimich. So why doesn't God stop heinous sin before it happens? He can stop sin in one case and not the other. So free willies have to either believe that God only has power to stop certain sins or is selective in stopping some sin and not others. Neither makes any sense. How about the confer conversation of Saul of Tartarus? This is a man who made as strong of a choice as a person could possibly make. This choice was against Christ, as Saul chose to imprison and breathe murderous thoughts toward believers in Christ. Jesus himself asked Saul, Why are you persecuting me? If anyone ever made a free will choice to reject Christ, it was Saul of Tartarus. Of course, God has to respect human free will and allow Saul to do this evil. According to the free will doctrine, God gave Saul the ability to choose freely. Well, Saul made his choice. Did God honor this choice? Did God say, well, I give Saul free will and he rejected me? Did God allow this evil to disrupt his plan? Was God a gentleman that respected Saul's decision? Hell no to all four of these questions. God did not honor Saul's choice like free will. Says he has to. No, despite Saul's decision, this is what God said to him. Yet the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a choice instrument of mine to bear my name before the nations and kings and besides the sons of Israel, for I shall be intimidating to him how much he must be suffering for my name's sake. Acts 9, 15, 16. Now I said, What shall I be doing, Lord? Now the Lord said to me, Rise, go into Damascus, and there will, there you will be spoken to concerning all which has been set for you to do, Acts 22.10. So God took a man that chose to reject Christ and made him a choice instrument of God to do all that has been set forth for him to do. God didn't honor Saul's free will. The Almighty chose for Saul to become Paul well beforehand, and nothing can stop this. If Paul could have made a free will choice after being visited by the glorified Christ. So in these two accounts, God can stop sinners from sinning, and God can make the most vile sinners do as well. God is not subject to evil nor to man's free will, of course. God plans Abelmatch's desire and Saul's rejection from the start as well, because all is of God, 2 Corinthians 5.18. Love, grace, and peace to you all. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful night. And God bless you all.